YouTubers, Barry here. So we're brewing my two one-gallon batches as you see here behind me. This one is the ESB in a smaller eight-quart or two-gallon pot. And then I have the porter in here in the three-gallon pot or 12-quart pot. So each pot is wrapped in a towel and then I put this light blanket on top of that. So right now the ESP was mashed in first, so I'm going to get my spoon and my thermometer and check the temp and then work on getting it up to 168 and then for a mash out and then I'll let it steep for 10 minutes. That's per Beersmith's advice. The one thing I'm not doing for a Beersmith's advice is the starting volume. So I have a sticker down here which you probably can't see what my starting volumes are for each beer. The ESB I mashed in at one with 1.625 gallons and the porter with 1.75 gallons. So then I'll know for each pot what the boil off rate is um, by the end. So if I don't hit my numbers with these two beers, this is, these two beers are really just to in you know in it like inaugurate or initiate into my brew equipment my two one gallon fermenters so you know if I don't hit my numbers or I have to boil down longer then you know we'll see but for now let's just see how well this insulation did while trying to still keep the porter as insulated as possible so we got to about when I first stuck to the thermometer and it's losing temp now but when I first stuck the thermometer in there, it was at 145, and I started about one, a little over 152, so in 75 minutes it lost about 8 degrees. So hopefully for, you know, for the, for the first hour or so, it was, or most of that first hour with the small amount of grain, it was over, over 152. So maybe next time I'll insulate it a bit more. Um, and see, but now what I have to do is hold the bag and what or keep the bag. Uh, I mean, no, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stir the grains a little bit and then I'm gonna turn the tie the bag to the side of the pot and then I'm gonna bring it up to 168 to mash out and then hold that for 10 minutes. As you see, we have a pretty vigorous boil here on my ESB so I'm going to turn it down a tiny bit to control the boil off rate keeping it between a 4 and a 5 it's still a pretty vigorous boil um, so I have all my hops weighed out quick shot this is what the porter looks like heating up a nice dark brown head and nice dark body um, and I have the grains draining here like that and then um, here we have in these cool dinner plastic cups weighed out all four editions of hops. So we have uh, 60. I wrote just to keep it, you know, just to keep it clear. I wrote ESB, for, you know, on each one for to know that it's for the ESB because I'll be weighing out the porter one next. So we have point. 3 of an ounce, 0 0.3 of an ounce of US Goldings going in at 60 minutes. Then at 20, we have 0.15 of Goldings because they're a little, they're 5.8 alpha acid, which is pretty high for Goldings. And then at 20, we also have 0.2 of an ounce of, of a Willamette, which are 4.2 alpha acid, all from Yakima Valley Hops, of course. And at 10 minutes, finally, we have a quarter of an ounce, or 0.25, of Willamette again. So, let's go ahead and uncover our 60-minute hop cup. 
and uh, go over to our pot and just dump them right in. It made the boil go a little crazy, crazy, but uh, yeah. So there we are with that addition. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you me dumping in the wort um, for for the porter. Put that in the sink with the other dirty dishes and pour that in there. And yeah, so once that comes up to a boil, we'll come back with the next hop drop. Cheers. Hey Brewtubers, so it's time for the 60 minute edition of the porter. So I'll, I'll quickly tell you, show you the hop edition. So at 60 minutes, we have 0 0.20 or a fifth of an ounce of nugget hops. Then at 20 minutes, we have uh, point, 0 0.2 or another fifth of an ounce of Willamette. Followed by the 10 minute, again, 0.1 of Willamette, or a tenth of an ounce. And then, at 5 minutes, we have 0.10, or a tenth of an ounce, of Nugget. So, I should mention that this porter recipe is inspired by Founders Porter. The only thing I'm doing differently, uh, just, you know, just to test the recipe, is sometimes I don't like the, like the big, bold, hoppy backbone to Founders Porter. I have to be in the mood for it, even though it's still one of my favorite porters. I like to want it to be a little softer, so I'm going to split the pack of SO4, which I'm leaving out during brew day to get up to room temperature before I rehydrate it. Um, I'm going to split the pack of SO4 to see if that really softens out the beer, but still gives a nice hop character and a nice malt character. So let's go ahead and get the nuggets into my boil. And lower the flame to the same setting as the other one just for control reasons and uh, we'll go from there cheers okay so the flame is out on the ESP you see it's a really nice hopefully you see it's a really nice deep red color which is what I was going for with the crystal 60 and the honey malt and here's the porter still boiling so this is the last hop edition. I didn't film the most of the other hop editions, you know, the 20s and the 10s. But here I have the last 0.1 or tenth of an ounce of nugget going in at five minutes. The porter. So once the porter boil is done, I'm just going to use my wort chiller because I don't have any ice, and should get these both of these batches down um, pretty, you know, pretty quickly. So I'm really looking forward to a. Uh, seeing how everything turns out and what my boil off rate is because all right guys so here we have the esb it's a nice golden reddish color i don't know if you can see that but it's hard to see with the foam on the hydro around the hydrometer but it's about 10 52 ish if you find when i try to look close which is basically where I wanted it to be. I don't know. I'm going to pour this back because I sanitized the hydrometer. But I don't know. Let's pour it back. Because I'm waiting for the yeast to rehydrate over there. And two separate things. One for each one. Um, pour this back in. this back on and then uh, I'll push it down harder yeah and I don't know where the one gallon mark I don't know if it's up here where it says one gallon or or what but that's what I have I guess you guys can tell me what you think of that level but at this level I pretty much hit my numbers the height again I have a big discrepancy between the hydrometer which says I pretty much hit my numbers and the refractometer says I was really low, so I don't know which one is correct, but I definitely cooled down the ward enough, so it should be, you know, calibrated with the hydrometer, so I don't know what you guys can tell me a little bit about the discrepancy. Um, I tend to shy towards the refractometer, but in this case, either I really went really low, because the refractometer was saying like 1045, or I hit my numbers, 
which around which was supposed to be around 10:55 or so. Oh, you know, with this, I came pretty close. So somewhere in the middle. It's still going to be a bitter, English bitter, but it might be a little more hoppy if I didn't hit my gravity even close. So I don't know. We'll have to see what it tastes like in the end. All right, guys. So as you see, I had my wort chiller hooked up. When I'm siphoning in the porter, as you see, it's a really nice dark brown color. Almost black, but pretty closer to a dark brown. I'm just using my siphon just to get it into the fermenter. This one, remember, I started with 1.75 gallons of liquid, but, you know, the different pot size pots could have different boil-off rates, but I kept them, again, at the same setting on the gas dial, you know, so, um, so we'll have to see, you know, how much this pot gives us, and it's really not giving us, already, I think I should have started with a lot more because um, it's really not filling up much um, both both of them I think the boil off rate sucked or didn't get enough so I might just have to filter in some of the other stuff in the thing because that's definitely not a gallon since I didn't get as much volume with the ESB and I'm you know kind of being a little neurotic I'm gonna I'm straining all the crap from the bottom of the porter into the fermenter through a strainer and through my funnel um, so I can keep out some of the hot break and all those hops in there um, and then I'll take a gravity reading but um, right now it's filling up pretty high once I added that stuff in I'm not going to do it for the ESB because it's been sitting out for a while and you know if I don't get four bottles from the ESB you know you know it'll be this is just you know a learning thing I'm probably just going to use this big pot next time and you know only brew one one gallon batch at a time and use a little bit more like about two gallons of water in there just to make sure I get you know I don't have to do this straining part um, but you know it's all a learning experience and uh, so we'll see what happens but I'll be back when I pitch the yeast cheers so we have my porter here um, and I don't know if you could see that but Right about 1064, when I was supposed to get around that 1064, 1066 in that area. So we hit the color for sure, and we hit our numbers. So I'm not going to take a refractometer reading with this one because we got a volume, unlike the ESB, which we were a little, a good amount lower in terms of volume. All right, so the STC 1000 is saying it's 18.8, which is just under. Uh, 66, about 66 degrees, um, so that's perfect. And I'm probably gonna keep it between 18 and 19, or 64, 66, just to see how it starts. And if it's going slow, then I'll probably up it. But I don't want to start it for a one-gallon batch too hot, like hot, as warm as I would do for a full five-gallon. So I have tin foil on top of both of them because I want to air, shake it up to aerate before I put the bung back on. Pour that in. And then take the airlock, re-sanitize the bottom of it. Stick it in. So I have the probe stuck to the porter as you see because it's fuller and it's going to be producing a little more heat because it's higher gravity so I'd rather keep it cooler than you know and have the temperature gauged from this one so again we're just going to jostle it a tiny bit just aerate it a tiny bit and then take off this and take this measuring cup move the saran wrap pour in Yeast. Hey, Brewtubers, Barry here. So, I'm recording this the next afternoon, you know, almost 24 hours after I brewed um, and uh, pitched the yeast. Um, so, both beers, the my ESB and Port, are both fermenting really nicely. I was, you know, 
little concerned that I didn't split the yeast exactly and there's a little more in the porter fermenter than there is in the ESB. But again, these are test batches. So, I mean, you guys can tell me what they look like. We're experienced with Demi Johns or one gallon fermenters, you know, if there's a, actually one gallon in each of them. Especially the ESB seems to me to be a little low. But anyway, as you could see, they're both fermenting pretty nicely. And, uh,. You know, I'm really excited to see how these two test batches come out. And uh, just to reiterate, the porter is inspired by Founders Porter, um, except the only difference is that I used, instead of using my pack of SO5, I mean, of, yeah, yeah, SO5 um, that I, of American Ale that I have in my fridge, I just split the pack of SO4, so I really want to see what an English yeast strain does to a hoppy American porter recipe. And then the ESB is just, I looked at some other ESBs online and, you know, and just created my own quick, you know, really simple ESB recipe. So we'll see, you know, what the final product is and then I'll go from there, because I really like ESBs like Fuller's ESB. So if I can create my own really drinkable ESB and like brew a gallon of it or a couple gallons of it at a time just to have it around, that'd be pretty nice. Because I do like like the flavorful low ABV English ales. So these are this is what fermentation looks like, doing really well, and uh, really excited for these beers. So happy homebrew Wednesday and cheers.